Hello, my friends, and welcome back. Thank you very much for being with me again today. Now, that's uh, a very surprising piece of news, and that is Donald Trump, the former U.S. president, was asked uh, during an interview if he would consider Tucker Carlson as his running mate, vice president. And uh, Donald Trump answered yes, he would consider Tucker as his vice president. I have two articles here and uh, I will discuss with you regarding uh, this topic. The one uh, coming from The Wrap and the other one coming from uh, Sputnik. Sputnik is more direct as obvious. Uh, these guys are always keeping it long. Donald Trump says he'd consider Tucker Carson for vice president. And I'm quoting, he's got great common sense. Now, he says here that would you consider Tucker Carson on your VP list? And he says, oh, wow. First of all, I did my first, you could call it counter programming, but I, I won't call it that. But Tucker wanted to do an interview during the first debate, Trump said. And I think, you know, we broke every record in history. I think it hit over 300 million people, but it was for the evening over 207 million, then got to 275 million within a day or two. So he's talking about how much success he had in um, by being with Tucker or talking to Tucker. And here it is. President Donald Trump tells blah, blah, blah. He'll consider Tucker Carson. I like Tucker a lot. I guess I would consider him. He's got great common sense. Or we're going to go to this guy as post Sputnik. Trump says would consider Tucker Carson as 2024 US presidential election running mate. And this guy's straight there. And he says, I like Tucker a lot. I guess I would because he's got great common sense. Top said, Trump said. All right. Well, what do you think about that one? Well, it's, uh, I don't want to say unfortunate, but uh, strange and that in, a, uh, in our uh, time, we have to pick between, uh, you know, a, an entrepreneur uh, and the other one being a host, uh, media host. And the other side would be a uh, professional politician and a uh, know nothing. This is the level of the US democracy. If you like it, uh, that's fine. I don't. And uh, <laughs> we can play this game as uh, Trump, Tucker, this and that, you know, as uh, Joseph Stalin said, according to some. Uh, well, let them vote when he was asked about democracy and allowing uh, the Soviet people to vote. He said, let them vote as long as we are the ones counting the votes. So the same here. Let them vote. They're going to let us vote for whomever over there. As long as uh, someone else is counting the vote. And once they get in the office, I don't think they will have much uh, power. Why? Because remember, Trump cannot push buttons. He has to tell someone else to push buttons. And that someone else has to tell someone else that someone else has to tell someone else. We're going to have some fun, which is uh, nice talking. Trump will talk, Tucker will talk, and nobody will listen to them in their administration. That's what happened in the first uh, Trump administration. Trump was picking his, uh, you know, uh, secretaries of certain departments, and those were those guys were not even following his directives. And if they were following and barking down, you know, chain of command, they were not listening. The bureaucracy was already, uh, how should I put it, uh, having its own interest. And what would you do? They just postponed. Yes, yes, we'll do it. We're going to do it, Mr. President. And then you fire the guy, get another one, the same thing. Why? Because you have to fire a lot of people down there. That happened with Department of Justice, that happened with FBI investigations, that happened with the military when he asked uh, the troops to come back from, I can't remember, it, it was Syria or Afghanistan, I think it was Syria. Nobody listened to him. When he wanted to build the wall, 
Not even his party uh, supported him. He had to take uh, what five uh, what was it uh, five billion dollars? I think it was from the military. So it was uh, through a little loophole. They were not giving the money. They didn't give him the money in anything. Now what strange is this? If I remember correctly, it was pre former President Obama who, through an executive order, so give an order, fuck, boom, and became kind of a law, right? An executive order. He uh, gave the DACA, you know, DACA. It was not uh, voted by the government, by the government, by the, by the um, U.S. Uh, how do you call it? Jesus Christ, uh, Senate or the House? No, no, Congress. Jesus Christ, hard word tonight. He just wrote it down and. That's it. When what's his name came back, came uh, and won the elections, Trump, he didn't get rid of that. He could have written another uh, document saying DACA is out, as Biden did with Trump's uh, little uh, executive orders. So you see, these guys are left and right, right? Okay, supposedly. And uh, the pendulum goes to the left. And goes to the right and goes to the left. Unfortunately, here is like this the pendulum. This is left and right. Okay. It goes to the left, goes to the right, it goes to the left, it goes to the right, it goes to the left, it goes to the right, it goes to the left, it goes to the right, it goes to the left, and it goes to the right. It never goes to the right. It always goes to the left. Like this. You know? Like a clock. Click, 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 click. It goes up on that side. When the Democrats are coming to power. They always do stuff. When the Republicans come, they don't bring it back, not even where it was before the Democrats came over there. If you look at the trend in the US politics and our law and blah, 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 things are going left all the time. And when these guys are coming supposedly fight for our rights, you know, when they get the power, they don't do anything. They come back a little bit or maybe they stop right there. And when the, the Democrats come back to power, they continue from, from where, where they left it, a little bit lower, and then immediately, puck, puck, puck. So remember, this politics is not left and right like that. It's just left, left, right, left, right, left, left, but it's a continuous direction into the, into the left. Look with our rights, with, uh, with our other, uh, with our uh, house liberties. It's like more monitoring, more policies, Look, look at the right to bear arms. It seems like the pendulum never comes back where it's supposed to be. More and more infringement, infringement, more regulations, more regulations, more control, more control. Freedom of speech, the same way. More control, more regulation, more control. Not to the right, to the left. What else am I supposed to say? They can search your ass whenever they want. Oh, unreasonable searches or... I played the fifth. <laughs> and many others dread the right to for a free assembly. Look how that was respected during COVID, COVID uh, right of free assembly. Everything was going left. What was going right? Anyway, so I don't give a if uh, Trump gets and Tucker. We're going to have some, some uh, debates over there and people saying stuff and the media will make some money again by, you know, trying to attack these guys all the time. But as things are, they were, they will be accomplished. Nothing will be accomplished. Nothing. They will be the same. It reminds me of that bad guy called Putin. In one of his interviews, he was asked who uh, he would like to, who, who he would like to see in the office. Uh, Trump was running for election with um, Hillary. Which one? And he said, "Well, it's not up to us. It's up to the American." I know, uh, electorate. But then he said, and regardless, the uh, uh, United States will not change its policies. The policies, he said, a little bit uh, veiled, are already set in place. It doesn't really matter. If, he said, I dealt with five uh, American leaders, I think he said, and I, I noticed that in, uh, and he gave the example of Barack Obama who was well-intended and, you know, promises during the campaign. And when they get into the office, they go back to the same thing. So during the campaign, they say all kind of stuff. We're going to do this. We're going to do that. Like it takes another direction. 
And when they get in the office, they go the same direction they were going for the whole this time. And he gave the example of Guantanamo Bay, that prison, that military base in Cuba. Putin gave it. He said, uh, Barack Obama ran on one of his promises during his campaign that he was going to close that uh, military base or whatever prison in Cuba. He said that what he said before when he got in the office, did he do it? Did, 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 he said, did they let him do it? That's, what he, that's the way he phrased it. Did they let him do it? No. He said because uh, right after he got elected, he said in uh, two or two days, one or two days, you got two people coming in there dressed nicely in suit with ties, different colors, and they come over there and then tell the president how things are run around here. And then the president says, yes, sir. Remember, the president is at the whim of Secret Service. Secret Service can pick him up and take him uh, to hide him from uh, us, you know, for national security, if they want. He's not in charge of that. He is in charge, but who receives the order? Trump gives the order of Secret Service? No. They get their order from their superior chain of command. Do you think it's going to question the, the order given? Uh, wait, wait, wait. I, I'm not sure if I should go and uh, protect the president by uh, kidnapping him and putting him in a van and uh, putting, getting him in uh, that forest that you're calling outside of the city. Right? He's not going to say that. He's going to say, yes, sir, like a machine that he is. Pick him up and get him where he was ordered to take him. Who ordered him? Not Trump. <laughs> Thank you very much for being with me again today. So, doesn't really matter. Stay strong, stay smart, look for the truth and be just.